The Dark Web. The name conjures up visions of nefarious characters doing all sorts of despicable things, using sophisticated technology to stay out of the reach of law enforcement and forever ahead, one step ahead of the good guys. Well, some of that is true, some of it's exaggerated, and some of it is just flat out false. So let's take a look at the Dark Web and what it, what it really is. First, one way to look at the dark web, or one common definition of the dark web, is that it is simply those websites on the internet that will not turn up in a Google search. This is not difficult to achieve technically. You simply turn off or delete or prevent access to a file called robots.txt on your web server and Google and other search engines, Yahoo, <coughs> excuse me, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, uh, Bing, etc., will not find that website. So it enables these websites to stay under the radar, if you will, to exchange information, or its users will exchange information about the website basically through word of mouth. And consequently, it helps them engage in activities that are, generally speaking, criminal or despicable or at best questionable. The a couple of other technological features are associated with the dark web. They are often accessed through a, something called the Tor network or other anonymizing networks. Tor is the most famous one. Uh, stands for the Onion Router and it's basically a set of volunteer operated systems that serve to obfuscate the IP address and location and other identifying information of a computer accessing a given website. The Tor network actually is not as effective as its originators once hoped. In fact, researchers from MIT recently demonstrated that they could in fact penetrate the Tor network and identify a user's IP address and other uh, key information about a computer with about 85% accuracy despite all of the uh, efforts of the Tor network to hide it. So much so in fact that one of the dark web sites, one of the more famous ones, uh, called Silk Road actually shut down because they realized that the jig was up, they weren't able to hide behind the Tor network so well anymore. Silk Road, by the way, was a network uh, website where you could purchase I illegal drugs. It, and it was apparently quite big. They were the, so to speak, the Amazon of, of uh, drug dealers on the web. <coughs> now, the other uh, technology that's commonly used in conjunction with the dark web, although it's not a dark web technology, neither is Tor, actually. Tor was actually started by privacy advocates rather than criminals, although it's inevitable that any technology that's even reasonably effective gets turned to criminal means or purposes of it uh, sooner or later. But Bitcoin, which is the electronic currency uh, that is, uh, I want to emphasize, not meant to be used for criminal activity, it's just an electronic currency, is commonly used for dark web transactions because they're criminal and they can execute them without having to physically send cash anywhere or engage in other kinds of financial transactions that, that are easily trackable. But I want to emphasize that Bitcoin is not meant to be a... There's nothing illegal about Bitcoin. It's fine. It's just, it's just used by criminals as a more convenient way of uh, conducting financial transactions. So, having said all this, it is true that the dark web attracts all kinds of really disgusting, disturbing uh, criminal activity. There are dark websites that offer contract killing services if uh, someone wants to have someone murdered. They are sites that raise funds for terrorists. There are places on the dark web where you can sell and buy biological and chemical weapons. And the most disturbing, I think for most people, are the vast array of deeply disturbing pornographic sites that all too often feature children. So the sordid nature of the dark web is well deserved, but 
its effectiveness and its size have often been exaggerated. There are some people where you'll read reports that say that the dark web is actually much bigger than the legitimate web. Well, that's really not true. Most, e even the most, uh, I want to say optimistic estimates of how many uh, dark web sites are in existence come to about 30,000. That compares to about a billion legitimate, well, I won't say they're all legitimate, but a billion we websites that are not on the dark web. Unfortunately, a lot of those billion sites that are not on the dark web are also not legitimate at all. But the dark web is not nearly as large as many would have you believe. It is, and it is certainly not larger than uh, the non-dark web, if you will. <coughs> it, the um, nature of the activity also uh, is not as uh, obscure as you might think. If criminals can access it, law enforcement can too, thank goodness. The uh, Tor network, as I mentioned, has already been compromised. And f in one case, a, the Washington Post researched two websites that were raising funds for terrorist organizations, and they were using Bitcoin. It turns out that one of these websites raised a grand total of about $1,200, and the other raised exactly $0. So it's not like it's a terribly effective way to raise money if you're a terrorist organization is to, ter to try and dive into the web. In any way, you're not hiding that well anyway. So. The, um, <clears throat> the, the dark web then is indeed a very nasty, repulsive place. Don't go there. Don't try to go there. I'm not going to tell you how to get there. It's not the place you want to be anyway. Even if you did see what they had, you would not want to see it. And you also don't want to get on the FBI watch list. However, you should know that it exists, but it's not as fearful as you might I expect in part for a rather sad reason. Many of the horrible services that are offered on the dark web are actually offered on the websites that you can find through Google or Yahoo or Bing. So the dark web is actually exaggerated in its size and its ability to evade law enforcement, but it is out there. But whatever you do, don't go there. Thanks.